Okay, and this is an important distinction to make, you guys, because, hey, normally when we saw a CH4 drawn in a Lewis structure before, it just looked like this. We just drew a carbon connected to four hydrogens with four straight lines like this. And if you just draw like this, this implies that, hey, this is a 90 degree angle. This is a 90 degree angle. This is a 90 degree angle. This is a 90 degree angle, okay? And all of these atoms are in the same plane. But this is not the case because if you look at how CH4 actually exists, it exists in three dimensions with bond angles of 109 degrees, okay? That's why we're stressing this to you right now. Okay, so let's start off with a compound that only has two bonds. And don't write this down here, okay, because it doesn't belong here. We'll get to this in a little bit, okay? This is just an example, okay? So, hey, let's start off with a compound that has two single bonds. So, hey, let's pretend here's an atom in the center. He's going to be connected to an atom there on the side, and then another atom here on the side, okay? So, hey, do me a favor and pretend that these markers are bonds. So, this is going to be a bond here, this is going to be a bond here, and there's an atom on the side in the center and on this side, okay? So, hey, these markers are bonds. So here's two electrons, here's two electrons connecting an atom here, a first atom here, a second atom here, and a third atom here. They're all connected by these bonds, okay? So, hey, let me ask you a question. If bonds are made out of electrons, and electrons are negatively charged, and negatives repel other negatives, then what position would these markers want to be in, these electrons want to be in? What I mean is, if all three of these atoms were connected, would they want to be arranged like this, with their bonds really, really close to each other? Or would they want to be arranged like this, with their bonds as far apart from each other as possible? As far apart from each other as possible, right? And so they'd be in a straight line like this, a straight line like this, okay? Let's see what happens if a compound has three sigma bonds. Okay, so if we added a third sigma bond to the central atom right here like this, what would happen is in order for these bonds to get as far from each other as possible, then they would split up into this triangular shape. And it's called a trigonal planar shape with these bonds being as far apart from each other as possible. So this bond is as far apart from this bond as possible, is as far apart from this bond as possible, is as far apart from this bond as possible in a trigonal planar shape that looks like this. Okay, with these bonds shaped in this trigonal planar shape, okay? And this is actually the, the other two shapes that we're going to be dealing with. This one, where you only have two single bonds, this is a linear shape, okay? This one, where you have three single bonds, it's called a trigonal planar shape. But we'll get to this when we talk about the other two types of shapes you can have with the other two types of bond angles, okay? So, hey, don't write this down here. We're going to get to it in just a second after we finish up tetrahedral. So let's see what happens when you add a fourth bond to the mixture, okay? Okay, so how would a compound look like if it had four sigma bonds? Well, at first glance, you'd probably think that to get as far away from each other as possible, the bonds would be arranged in a cross shape like this with these bonds pointing in four opposite directions. And this is a good guess. But we know that when four atoms are single bonded to a central atom, it makes a tetrahedral shape that looks like this, right? So, hey, let's see how that happens. Okay, so if three bonds are arranged like this in this trigonal planar shape, all in the same plane, let's see what happens when a fourth bond comes in, okay? So, when a fourth bond comes in, then the trick is to think in three dimensions because these atoms can all try to get as far apart from each other as possible in the same plane like they are now, or they can choose to utilize all the space in front and back of them, okay? And the answer is, of course, they use all the space in front and back of them to get as far away from each other as possible. So let's see how this works, okay? Okay, so this guy right here, he's like, hey, look at all this space in back of me. I'm gonna just move back. Okay, so he moved back. And then this guy, he's like, hey, look at all this space in front of me. I'm gonna just move forward, right? And then this guy wants to get in on the action too, so he moves a little bit to get as far away from the other bonds as possible. And eventually, it ends up in this tetrahedral shape type of thing, okay? Like this, okay, with these two plane, with these two bonds in the same plane, this hydrogen coming out of the board like this wedge, and this hydrogen going into the board like this dash. Okay, so hey, sorry you guys, I know that this is really hard to see, but I'm just trying to help you visualize what's going on. Okay, these bonds were just trying to get as far away from each other as possible. Okay, to make this tetrahedral shape. Go home tonight and build an actual tetrahedral compound with your chemistry set if you want a more accurate view of how these bonds are arranged, okay? So, 
Hey, that was an example of a tetrahedral compound with all single bonds. But I told you, it could also have lone pairs, right? So hey, let's see an example of a tetrahedral compound with some lone pairs on it. Okay, so let's take for example NH3. Okay, and NH3 looks like this. It's gonna have three hydrogens bonded to it. Single bonds, right? Except this nitrogen has three single bonds and one lone pair. So it's gonna have one lone pair on top of this nitrogen. And when you draw this thing in 3D perspective like this, then a lot of times you'll see that these electrons will be enclosed in this orbital type thing, okay? So if you see this thing around these electrons, it's just to show you that they're in this orbital as a lone pair, okay? Okay, so the general shape of NH3 is tetrahedral, but you'll also hear it called trigonal bipyramidal, which is a little more accurate because its bond angles are a little less than 109. They're actually like 107 between each of these atoms, okay? But hey, for most purposes, you can just consider it as having a tetrahedral shape. That's its basic shape, okay? So, hey, it's arranged exactly like CH4, except instead of a four sigma bond right here, there's a lone pair. And hey, you guys, a lone pair works the same as a single bond in terms of repelling these other bonds. So hey, electrons in lone pairs repel just as good, if not better than electrons in single bonds. So when you're thinking of a compound shape, treat lone pairs and single bonds the same. Okay, so let me repeat that because it's a very important point. When you're thinking of a compound shape, treat lone pairs and single bonds as the same. And you'll see what I'm saying when we go through the other two examples. But hey, this was the first basic shape, you guys. Tri tetrahedral, okay? Now let's go on to the second basic shape, trigonal planar. Okay, so the second basic shape is trigonal planar. Okay, and go ahead and put in parentheses next to trigonal planar, 120 degrees. Okay, because hey, trigonal planar compounds have bond angles of 120 degrees. And let's write a couple more things down about this guy. Because trigonal planar consists of not four sigma bonds, but this time three sigma bonds, like we saw in our example a little bit earlier. Okay, so hey, trigonal planar compounds, these have a combination of three sigma bonds or lone pairs. Okay. Okay, so these compounds, they can have multiple bonds, but when you're determining a compound shape, the only thing you look at is how many sigma bonds or lone pairs an atom has. Okay, so hey, for tetrahedral compounds, it had four sigma bonds. Trigonal planar compounds are going to have three. Let's show you an example. Okay, so a really simple example of a trigonal planar compound would be H2CO. And this guy looks like this. C double bond O connected to two H's. And if you notice here, you guys, we don't have any dashed lines or wedge lines. They're all straight lines. Why is that? Because all of these bonds, all of these atoms are in the same plane. They're all in the plane of the board, okay? Tetrahedral was the only one that had 3D perspective, okay? So trigonal planar, all these compounds are in the same plane of the board. They're planar, they're flat in the same plane of the board, okay? Okay, so this compound has three single bonds and one pi bond, okay? So let me illustrate this to you guys by drawing the single bonds in green. There's a single bond, there's a single bond, and either one of these can be a single bond. Okay, so it has three single bonds and one pi bond that I've left in black here. And hey, you guys, what's a pi bond? I told you before, but let me say it one more time. A pi bond is just a multiple bond. Whenever you see a double or a triple bond, those are made from pi bonds. Single bonds are made out of sigma bonds, like these ones in green, okay? Multiple bonds, like those in double or triple bonds, are made out of pi bonds, okay? 
But hey, I want to make one thing clear to you. When you look at a double bond like this, a double bond is made out of one sigma bond that you see in green and one pi bond that you see in black right here, okay? So for example, when you look at this double bond, let's say this one more time, one of these bonds comes from a single bond like this one in green and the other comes from a pi bond in black, okay? So in other words, a double bond is not just two single bonds put together. The two bonds of a double bond are completely different. A double bond is made out of one single sigma bond and one multiple pi bond, okay? So a double bond is made out of one single bond and one pi bond, okay? It's not just two single bonds put together. And I know that in our Lewis structure right here, they look identical, okay? They both look, just look like two straight lines, right? But you just have to realize that one of these comes from a single bond and the other comes from a pi bond. And you'll make this distinction later on, okay? But for now, just take my word for it that one of these is a sigma bond, the other one is a pi bond, okay? Okay, so just to really drill this into your skull, you guys, let's say it one more time. All atoms are first directly connected by single bonds, okay? So this compound was first connected by three single bonds. Then this other pi bond got added in. Okay, so hey, all compounds are first connected by single bonds, then anything extra is a pi bond, okay? That's why if you look at this compound, we'd say that it has one, two, three sigma bonds, and one pi bond, okay? And this is an important distinction for you guys to make because you need to be able to identify how many sigma bonds and how many pi bonds a compound has. So just to make sure you understand the sigma pi thing, let's look at this compound. All right, so let me erase this and I'll put up a compound for you guys to look at. Okay, so let's look at HCN. And this is gonna be an HC triple bonded to a nitrogen. Okay, and don't write this down here, you guys, because it doesn't belong in your notes at this point. Just watch and listen, okay? So, hey, check out this compound. Tell me how many sigma bonds and how many pi bonds are in this compound. All right, so, hey, let's count the sigma bonds first. Remember, sigma bonds are the initial bonds that connect all atoms together. Pi bonds are just multiple bonds that are added later on top of those single bonds, okay? Okay, so there's a sigma bond connecting this H and this C, and then another one connecting this C and this N. Okay, I'll draw those, I'll draw those in green. All right, so hey, we've got one, two sigma bonds, right? So hey, now let's count the pi bonds and every multiple bond you see is going to be considered one pi bond. So if you look at this triple bond right here, you should realize that one of these bonds came from a sigma bond that I've drawn in green right here. That means the other one, two bonds there came from pi bonds, okay? So hey, this compound has a total of one, two sigma bonds that you see in green and two pi bonds that I've left in black right here. And I chose this example because I wanted you to see that a triple bond is made out of two pi bonds two pi bonds that you see in black, and one sigma bond that you see in green, okay? Whereas a double bond is made out of one pi bond in black here and one sigma bond in green here. Take home message, you guys, is that all atoms are first connected by single sigma bonds. Any bonds after that are formed by pi bonds, okay? So, hey, this HCN, he's first connected by single bonds, okay? And if I drew those in green, these are the single bonds. And then later you add in the pi bonds. Okay, so I know right now it's like, dude, according to these drawings, right, sigma bonds and pi bonds look exactly the same. They're both just represented by straight lines. And yes, we do draw them the exact same way in a Lewis structure, but you'll see later that sigma bonds are formed much differently than pi bonds. So it's just important to make the distinction now that they are different. Okay, so. Anyways, you guys go home and practice some of these sigma pi bond counting problems in your book. You should have it down after you count the sigma and pi bonds for a few compounds, okay? So anyways, you guys, sorry for this deviation right here, but I wanted to make sure you knew what a pi bond was, okay? So let me just erase this and we'll get back to our trigonal planar compound. Okay, so back to H2CO, our trigonal planar compound. This guy is made out of one, two, three sigma bonds that you see in green and one pi bond that you see in black. When you're looking for the shape of a compound or its bond angles, ignore pi bonds. Only pay attention to the sigma bonds or lone pairs if there is any. So, hey, in this case, we have three sigma bonds that you see in green, right? And if you 